Good morning. It's a miserable morning today, but quite fitting for the tale I'm going to tell you. It's a story of jealousy, rage, murder, and an appointment with the hangman. The year is 1919. It's a year after the end of the First World War, the Great War, the war to end all wars. Well, that went well, didn't it? There are two main characters in this story. The first is a man called Dick Rowland. Dick lived with his family in New Street in Grantham and he'd just returned from the war. He joined up in 1915 and he survived the war. However, the war was very unkind to their family because his two brothers were both killed. Dick had been gassed, he'd been subjected to all the artillery fire and so on. And it was said by many that he came back a different person. Of course, now we know what he was suffering from was PTSD. But of course, in those days, there was very little sympathy. And in fact, when these people came back from war, People sometimes didn't want to even know them, uh, less employ them. However, Dick did find employment. He worked in Grantham in a foundry and he'd met a girl and it was a girl he liked very much. And her name was Florence Ann Jackson. Floris family came from Fulbeck, which is probably around about 14, 15 miles from Grantham. And she worked as a live-in maid at Barkston House. Floris family lived here in Washdyke Lane, Fulbeck. Whenever she could, Flory would try and go home. And that meant a seven mile cycle ride. And it was on one of these cycle rides that an event took place that would have consequences later on. It was about this time that airmen from the army were being transferred into the newly formed Royal Air Force. And they were based at what was to become RAF Cranwell and it was on one of the many times she was cycling back to Fulbeck that she got her skirts caught in her chain. And as she was struggling to release them, along came a newly commissioned RAF pilot officer and he stopped and helped Florrie release her skirts. Now Florrie was possibly attracted to this handsome airman, but she'd been walking out with Dick Rowland for the past four or five months. Now clearly Dick thought the world of Florrie and he was desperate to keep her. Dick was a jealous man and when he heard about the pilot stopping to help Florrie, he was immediately suspicious. Those suspicions grew when on the 17th of May 1919, when they visited the Grantham Fair, Florrie was seen speaking to some soldiers. Dick, putting two and two together and making five, thought that Florrie was meeting up with the pilot and he flew into a rage. Florrie's sister tried to calm him down and said there was absolutely nothing in it. But Dick commented, if I don't have her, I'll see that no one else does. And those words would come back to haunt Dick in a way he couldn't imagine. The next event on their calendar was the Caythorpe Feast and that was on the 31st of May, 1919. Florrie wanted to go to the feast with Dick. Now it's said that Flo was a pretty girl and she was popular with the boys in the village. One such boy was Teddy Knights. Teddy was a groom at a nearby stables. He would certainly have frequented this place, which is our coffee stop for today. It's the Fulbeck Manor Stables. Because Dick Rowland had to travel from Grantham to come to the Caythorpe feast, Florrie's mother had allowed him to stay overnight at her house. It was against her better judgment because she didn't really like Dick. She felt he was much too old for Florrie. But nevertheless, he packed his kit and he made his way to Caythorpe. When he arrived at Caythorpe, he was horrified to see that Florrie was sharing a swing boat ride with Teddy Knights. He wasn't happy. It set the mood for the rest of the evening. At 10 o'clock, the two of them left to walk to Fulbeck to Florrie's home. And what happened next made Florrie's mother regret making the decision to let Dick stay the night. Florrie and Dick made their way to Fulbeck they walked along what is now a, a major A road, but it, 
in those days, it would have been a very, very quiet road. And they turned off here at a place called Gascoigne's Gate to make the way through a shortcut to Florrie's home. What happened here, we'll never know the true story, but this is where poor Florrie met her end. The first anyone was aware of what had happened was when a man pushing his bike along here was stopped by Dick. Dick called him over and said something terrible has happened. The man with the bike noticed that Dick's throat was bleeding. He could see a body lying on the ground and wanted to get closer, but Dick told him no, go and get help. Another passerby came along and Dick called him and said, a girl has cut my throat and then she cut her own. Tragically, the next person to come along the road was Florrie's sister. When Dick saw her, he called her over and he said, I've killed your Flo. Another man wanted her. I've tried to kill myself, but I couldn't. It was then they saw the body of Flo laying there. Her throat had been cut and in her hand was a cutthroat razor. After being treated for his wounds, Dick was immediately arrested and soon after charged with murder. His trial took place at Lincoln Assizes in November 1919. The jury heard evidence from the many witnesses, including those that had arrived at the scene of the murder soon afterwards. Dick's jealousy was spoken about and others would speak about how his mood quickly swung into rage. Flo's sister then recounted the comments that he'd made to her in the fair. If I don't have her, I'll see that nobody else does. Evidence was also given that Florrie was found with a cutthroat razor in her open palm. However, the expert witness testified that in his opinion, the weapon had been placed in Flo's right hand after her death. All Dick could rely on now was his defense's claim that he was suffering from mental illness following his experiences in the war. An eminent psychiatrist gave evidence that in his opinion, Dick was suffering from mental problems. The governor of the jail testified that he'd spent a lot of time with Dick while he was on remand. And in his opinion, he was of totally sound mind. The jury clearly took that opinion too and soon found Dick guilty of murder. But the jury did recommend a merciful punishment. However, Judge Justice Greer didn't show any mercy and sentenced Dick Rowland to death for the murder of Florence Ann Jackson. Dick's appointment with the hangman was made for the 10th of December, 1919. The sentence was appealed, but turned down and it looked for sure that Dick would die. But for some reason, the sentence of death was commuted to life in penal servitude. But even so, Dick was released in 1935. He went on to get married and he lived in Cleethorpes until he died in 1954. As for Florrie, her grave is somewhere here in Fulbeck Churchyard. I did try to find it, but I could find no record of it and there was no stone. So was Dick a victim of what we now know as PTSD? Or did he carry out his promise that if he couldn't have Florrie, he would see that no one else did? We'll never know. I first learned about this tragic tale when I was speaking to Alex Fain, the owner of Fulbeck Manor, of which the Fulbeck Tea Room and Craft Shop is part. Alex told me about the murder and pointed me to a book that they were selling in the craft shop. It's a book by author Jonathan Wilkinson, who's a local man, and the book is called A Jealous Feast. Jonathan researched the book carefully, and he also imagines a possible scenario around the killing. And if you're interested in the book, it's available from the Fulbeck Craft Centre, and I'll put the details in the description. So as always, thanks for watching, and I look forward to you joining us next time. Bye for now.